Um, our next speaker or our next presenter is actually going to talk to us about the NASA vendor database overview and presentation. And she, and she has agreed to uh, stick to 10 minutes or so in doing that so that we will be right back on time. So at this time, I would um, like to present to you uh, Trufilia Parker, who actually has worked tirelessly with us to bring this day to, to fruition. So thank you, Trufilia. I promise I will not take more than 10 minutes, and Glenn is committed to let me know when my time is up. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you an overview again of the NASA vendor database, and um, I will let you know that during the matchmaking and the exhibitor sessions this afternoon, I'll be available should you want to sign up for the vendor database today. And I hope many of your answers are yes. Again, could we get a quick raise of hands of who's already in the vendor database? Okay, so we have some work to do today. <laughs> so again, our, our discussion topics, again, a quick overview. Um, we'll talk about how we at the agency use the vendor database and then the benefit to you uh, for vendors. When you create one, we'll talk, discuss our subcontracting module and then um, Finally, our awards program, and we'll just do a quick plug there. So the NASA Vendor Database was initially established in uh, 2008. Our primary use for it at the agency is twofold. Externally to you is we use it as a market research tool where we basically can collect vendor information uh, for vendors who are currently doing business with NASA and those who are interested in doing business with NASA. Uh, through your vendor account, you can receive email updates from the agency, um, information regarding sources, sources sought notices. Um, we have a quarterly newsletter that is distributed through our vendor database. Um, all of the, um, I guess it's over 18,000 individuals at NASA have access to the vendor database. Our small business specialists send out uh, center-specific information regarding um, outreach events and other na um, announcements for their specific centers. So to access the vendor database, this is the website that's listed. I won't read it. You will get a copy of these slides to take with you. And at the very end of the presentation is a detailed step-by-step -step on how to register for the vendor database. So I'll share a couple of uh, screenshots that you will become familiar with once you register. On our website, osbp.nasa.gov, there's a link on doing business with NASA, and that's where you'll find the um, gateway to the vendor database portal. The, um, to register initially, you would select the green button and then the middle button is the for returning vendors. And again, we can kind of go through this in detail this afternoon during the matchmaking sessions. So one tip um, when you're registering for, when you're ready to register for the vendor database, be sure to have your DUNS number with you. Our vendor database is linked to SAM, so each evening around 11 o'clock there is a live update. So as long as your information is up to date to SAM or however it, you've entered it into SAM is how it's going to appear in our vendor database. So we always stress before you register, make sure your information is accurate in SAM. And again, it's another screenshot of what you'll see when you initially create an account. You'll receive two emails, uh, one with your username, one with your password. You'll have an opportunity to update your password uh, to something that you can remember. Uh, I think your initial password is about 25 characters long, and it's definitely not memorable. So you'll want to make sure you update that as soon as you can. Another screenshot on what you'll see when you register. And here's where you would enter your DUNS number. I would like to just point out the three tabs at the top. Uh, where it says vendor, search, and administration. Those are some of the tools you'll be able to use to manage your vendor information. The first tab for vendors where you have opportunity to update any specifics as far as um, if you would like to have alternate contacts listed as part of your um, account, you can enter that there. And then we'll talk about the search field um, in a couple of slides where we talk about our subcontracting module that you can opt into. So once we pull your information from SAM, you have opportunity to review it. If it's accurate, you can indicate so. If not, we suggest that you correct it in SAM and then complete your vendor uh, registration.
So periodically throughout the year, you'll have, this is a security measure at our agency, you have an opportunity and you'll receive emails to update your password. And then annually, you will have to renew your subscription to the vendor database. If you do not respond to those emails, we, we have a help desk that is um, great and willing to help you out. Um, your, your account is never uh, deleted. It's archived, so if you're in that situation where your account has been archived, just call, contact our help office. And I believe we have that at the end of this uh, slide set, and we'll be happy to get you back on track. So the um, just quickly about the NASA, uh, the vendor subcontracting module. Um, initially, when the vendor database was developed, only NASA employees could view vendor information. And um, in our November, excuse me, November 2016, we launched the um, vendor subcontracting module, which allows vendors who have opted into the module to view other vendors who've done the same, their information. So it's an opportunity for them to reach out to you directly, and as well as for you to reach out to uh, other companies um, directly as well. So again, these are companies that are looking for subcontracting opportunities at NASA. Uh, we have our NASA industry forum that meets twice a year that's comprised of small um, businesses currently doing business with NASA as well as some of our primes which are here today. They use the um, subcontracting module as a market research tool as well. So it's, it's a great benefit to uh, register and opt in for that um, service. And I'll also note that uh, you can, if you currently have a, a NASA Vendor Database account and have not opted into the subcontracting module, it's very easy to do so. Um, I can show you how to do that this afternoon. And if you're savvy enough, you can do it on your own. I'm getting a three minute mark. So this is a quick screenshot of what you'll see when you want to opt into the subcontracting module. Um, and then I'll just say the first tab, this is uh, the NVDB details. That's where you can enter your um, specific and um, information about yourself and your company. Um, we should always share, make sure for your social economic categories that you take time to um, indicate all that pertains to your company and sometimes universities. Uh, sometimes when we're searching for HBCUs or MIs, if they've not selected that or if we're looking for an 8A company in particular, um, uh, NAICS code, if you've not selected that, then you won't be included in the search results. Uh, the second tab indicates the subcontractor details, and you'll see you can just opt in or opt out, and then you can cut and paste your capability statement. And um, when we do keyword searches, it searches that field as well, as well as your attachments. The third tab over is the SAM details, and that's the information that comes over. And then the fourth tab, the uploads, shows where you can upload your capability statement, any other marketing materials that you would like. And this is my contact information. And again, I will be available during matchmaking and the exhibit time this afternoon. Are there any questions? Not. Thank you for your time.